Hello brothers and sisters in Christ and uh, we're going to continue the word study series on person turning to Psalms and doing Psalms and Proverbs. So if you want to turn to Psalms 15 uh, verse 1 and I thought I'd change it up do some outdoor like away from the house on the mountainside. So turning to Psalms 15 1 Lord who shall abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in thy holy hill, and whose eyes a vile person is contemned? But he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. So, we look at the context of person. The whole point of this study is to see if persons ever referred to anything other than someone who has a body, soul, and always referred to someone who's living, spirit. Because today people are just a reaper. They're trying to say you can say God in three persons. Well, God the Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. They don't have body, souls, and spirits of their own. Jesus is the only person of the Godhead. So we decided to go back and go through all the Old Testament and the whole New Testament to see the word person, if it's ever referred to just the soul or just the spirit. Uh -huh. So... I said vile person. I had to look up vileness. So moral baseness or depravity, deg degradation by sin, extreme wickedness. Okay. Um, and then I looked up contemned, contemned, uh, despised, rejected with disdain, rejected. So what's it talking about? In that first part, it says vile person is condemned in whose eyes a vile person condemned. When you see a vile person, you should, back then you despised him, you rejected him with disdain. Okay, then it says, but he, there's a key word, he, honoreth them that fear the Lord. Them is being contrasted to the person that's a vile person. It's talking about someone who has a body, soul, and spirit. He that swelleth to his own hurt and changeth not. So you're to reject with disdain people that are vile persons what this is talking about but you're to honor them that fear the Lord it's talking about people a person that has a body soul and spirit okay turn next to Psalms 26 verse 4 Psalms 26 verse 4 I have not sat with vain persons neither will I go in with dissemblers okay what's a vain person persons when you see it plural it's talking about multiple people okay Vileness, oh no, I did that one. Vain, empty, worthless, having no substance, value, or importance. So it's saying, I, I have not sat with vain persons. You haven't spent time with them. Neither will I go into, in with dissemblers. What's dissemblers? One who dissembles, a hypocrite. One who conceals his opinion or disposition under a false appearance. There's a lot of dissemblers today. But what is this talking about? The context of person, vain persons. Okay, someone who is having no substance, value, or importance, worthless, empty. It's still talking about somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. A dissembler, one who dissembles, a hypocrite. Okay, it's talking about people. Okay, one who conceals his, there's the key word, his, opinion or disposition under a false appearance. It's talking about somebody who has a body, soul, and is living. So let's turn to the next one, Psalms 49, 5. We're going to wait a second. The car's coming. Psalms 49, 5. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, talking about people, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceases forever that he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Wise men die, 
Likewise, the fool and the Brutus person perish. Brutus, insensible, stupid. That's basically what a Brutus person is. And leave their wealth to others. It's talking about someone who dies and thinks it's all about wealth. Okay. So it's still talking about a person, body, soul, and spirit. Likewise, the fool and the Brutus person. I still thought it's insensible. The words, the definition of Brutus, insensible and stupid. Brutish people. Okay, the Brutus person perish and leave their wealth to others. People always just trying to accumulate wealth and wealth and wealth, and that's all it's about. And when they die, they can't take it with them. You can't take anything in this world with you. Okay, all the wealth and everything. So turn to Psalms 82, 2. Next time, person is used. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? See law. Verse 3. Defend the poor and faithless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Okay. What is the definition of wicked? Evil in principle or practice. Deviating from the divine law. Addicted to vine, sinful, and moral. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Addicted to vice, left that word out, then sinful, immoral. Okay. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Okay, it's talking about, okay, this man, he's wicked. Defend the poor and the fatherless. But this man's rich and he and he's got prominent status in society. This guy over here is poor. Okay, you're not to respect this one because he's rich and this one's poor. You're not to respect this one because he's famous, this one isn't. Okay, you're definitely not supposed to respect this one because they give you money. How often do we see that a lot today? Over this person over here that's not wealthy. Okay, it's still talking about, okay, a person, it's talking about somebody who has a body, a soul, and is living. Now I'm going to go back to the other one. I forgot to say this in my notes. Perish. The bruised person perish. In order to perish, you got to be alive. So I know I backtracked a little bit. You got to be alive. Have a spirit in you. If you don't have a spirit in you, you're dead. Okay. That's why all throughout the Old Testament they're saying yielding up the ghost. Even the New Testament yielded up the ghost. When you die, your spirit leaves you. So that's a person has a body, soul, and spirit, and talks about how they're wicked. They don't obey the law. You're supposed to hold them accountable just as much as you hold this person accountable. I wanted to throw this in too. This person has a huge Babel building, and he's very prominent. And this guy, he preaches in the wilderness. He preaches along the mountainside. So you know we're going to treat him with respect, even though he's teaching wrong or he's going off the traditions of men. We're going to have more respect for him no matter how wicked he is and not respect to me or someone like me that's out here trying to preach the word okay. still talking about a person is a body someone who has a body soul and is living spirit if you want to turn to psalms 104 or 101 4 that's the next time person is used okay a froward heart shall depart from me i will not know a wicked person okay we already looked up the definition of wicked, evil in principle or practice, okay? But what's a froward heart? Froward, not willing to yield or comply with what is required, unyielding, ungovernable, disobedient. I had to look that up because we always hear froward. What does froward really mean? So a froward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. So someone who's disobedient, not willing, not willing to yield, you can be disobedient, fall away. I know this is Old Testament for instruction righteousness today. You can be disobedient, fall into sin, and fall away. And then God's like, he'll chasten you, or you'll get conviction from the Holy Spirit and everything, and he'll bring you back. But if you have a froward heart, you don't have a perfect heart. A perfect heart with the Lord says, Lord, I want to please you. I want to live for you. I want to obey you. I want to do what's right according to your word, and that's my desire. That's having a perfect heart. But this says a froward heart, not willing to yield or comply with what is required. You're not willing to yield to this book. And it talks about if you're not willing to yield to this book, guess what you're going to be? A wicked person. 
it's still talking about somebody who has a body, a soul, and a spirit. So far, you can't get around that. These people that keep saying that the, about the Trinity, that God and three persons, and then when we tell them, hey, person, the definition of person is someone who has a body and a soul, and it's always referred to someone who's living, spirit. So when you say God and three persons, you're saying God the Father has a body, soul, spirit of his own. Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit. That's truth. And then the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, spirit of his own. That's pagan. That's a pagan trinity. The whole point of this is to push people to say, stick with the Godhead. Stick with what's in the Bible. Stop going off the traditions of men. So if you want to turn to Psalms 105.36, that's the next time. 105.36. He smote also all the firstborn in the, their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. Now, it says, not one feeble person. Okay? So I'm about uh, when Israel came out of Egypt, when they... Uh, the firstborn were killed, the firstborn were killed, and Pharaoh finally said, go, depart from me and leave, and they go to leave. What's it talking about there when it says person? Okay, what's the word feeble? A lot of people say, oh, we know what it means, but let's go what it means, okay? Feeble, infirm, sickly, debilitated by disease. Okay, what it's saying there is that's a miracle in itself. Getting flies. It's a miracle in itself that not one person was feeble. But what is it talking about? The Jewish people coming out of Egypt. A person that has a, a person is somebody who has a body, a soul, and it's referred to someone who's living. But it's pretty amazing that not one of them was feeble to the point where they couldn't leave. Okay, oh, he's bedridden, we can't move him. Oh, this, oh, that. No, they were all, God got them all out. Okay. So, Proverbs, now that was done with Psalms. That's all the mentions of person in Psalms. Let's go to Proverbs 6, verse 12. Okay, now we're in Proverbs. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. I'm going to stop there for a second. We looked up wicked, evil in principle and practice, froward, not willing to yield, and now naughty, not willing to obey. Naughty person, a wicked man, walking with a froward mouth. That pretty much is the definition of lost people who reject Jesus Christ. Okay. Verse 13, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet. His eyes, his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart, froward heart. He divideth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Okay. Frowardness, reluctant to yield or comply. Okay? Froward is not willing to yield or comply, but reluctance, when it says frowardness, it's reluctance to yield or comply. So who's person talking about here? It's talking about somebody that has a body, a soul, and I, I'm just going to keep hammering this. Body, soul, and it's always li living. It's not referring to just the soul, and it's not referring to just the spirit by itself. It's someone that has to have all three to be considered a person. And I still, like I said, that's a good description of the lost world that rejects Jesus Christ. Naughty person, not willing to obey. A wicked man, okay? Evil in principle or practice. Walking with a froward mouth. Reluctant to yield or comply. So, turn to Proverbs 12, verse 11. 12 verse 11. This was a great spot I wanted to pull off and do the hillside and I knew some cars were coming so either I'll cut it out or we'll just deal with the cars coming because they're rarely coming. Okay. This is an old road, back road. Proverbs 12 11. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Now, satisfy with bread, tilleth the ground. Remember, today, the Bible talks about if you don't work, neither shall ye eat. So, there's that there. But also, it says, uh, 
but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. What is vo uh, vain? Okay. Go back to the top. Vain. Or I'm going to show the top of my notes. Vain, empty, worthless, having no substance, value, or importance. Okay? You have value when you work and you have something to show for it. But when you follow a vain person, it's void of understanding. They still talk about somebody with the body, soul, and spirit. They don't have understanding if they follow vain people. Okay? But if you work hard and you till up the ground, you don't go off somebody who just sets around, lazy, doesn't do anything. If you go with him and start hanging out with him, you're not going to have understanding. Next thing you know, you don't have anything to show for it. Okay? So, remember, this person is void of understanding, destitute, a void of learning, void of reason, or common sense. It's common sense. If you want to eat, you work. It's common sense. Back today, it's all, you know, dangers of convenience. You can go to the store and buy food. But back then, you had to till the ground and grow your food or you didn't have food. You had to have something that you could trade for food or you starved to death. I mean, they didn't have welfare. They didn't have all this junk that we have today. Okay. You had to work. And when you have the junk that we have today, what does it produce? It produces uh, vain persons that are void of understanding. Okay. Um, let's turn to Proverbs 18.5. Next time persons use Proverbs 18.5. It is not good to accept the persons of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Okay. Once again, accept the persons of the wicked. We looked up here wicked. Evil in principle or practice. Deviating from the divine law, addicted to vice, sinful immorality. You're not to accept the persons of the wicked to overthrow the righteous. You're not to take this person, someone who has body, soul, spirit, that's wicked, and say, okay, we're going to vote for him. He's in the right over someone who's righteous that has a body, soul, and spirit. You can't get around that, okay? Body, soul, and spirit. When someone's wicked, you call them out. You're wicked. Okay, if this person wronged him, you don't choose with that, the, a righteous man, you don't choose the wicked because they give you money. You know, they help donate to a Babel building. I like putting that in their Babel building. Uh, our government's corrupt, so they donate money to certain people. Hey, here's money. Vote this way so we can do our wicked stuff. Yet this person over here is righteous that's standing against it or living righteous, and this person's living wicked. You're not supposed to choose that person and back that person over someone who's doing right. You stand for what's right. And it needs to line up with this King James Bible, God's perfect written word. Okay, Proverbs 24, verse 8. Proverbs 24, verse 8. He that despiseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. Okay, deviseth to plan to scheme. Okay, he that deviseth, he that deviseth to do evil. In other words, he plans it, he schemes it. It's not just that I fell into temptation. It's premeditated. They're planning it. Okay. Shall be called a mischievous person. What's mischievous? Hurtful, inclined to do harm. They were doing it intentionally. And it's talking about somebody and their actions. So person is referring to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. Okay. There's times where people will do something purposely. You know, they'll sin willfully. Okay. But this is devises to do evil towards somebody else. There's times where you can sin willfully and it's you. But there's people that will devise evil, evil against other people. You know, like people who teach false doctrine. People who pull you away from the King James Bible. It's all planned. All these Bible versions. It's been planned from way back when. Uh, integration. Getting all these religions to come together. It's been planned way back when, and it's and it's called and that person's called a mischievous person. They mean to do harm. Okay. Most oftentimes they're the, their father, the devil. Proverbs twenty four twenty three. Proverbs twenty four twenty three. We've got three more after this one. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of 
persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. So you see, respecter of persons. Who's the two types of persons that's being talked about here? He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. Wicked people. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Someone who rebukes that wicked person. You're not to have a respect of persons again. If he's wicked, you call him out. You don't, you don't compromise. That's the big thing that's going around today. I've done it. I know brothers out there and sisters in Christ out there. It's compromise. When someone does wrong, you call them out. You do it privately. When, it's, when you believe that person's saved, you do it privately. When it's a question mark or that person's lost, you can just do it openly. But you're supposed to correct them privately. I've done it to people privately. And those people are still in that wicked sin. And I call it out. The biggest thing recently was video games, movies, and TV shows. Okay, you can't glorify God with it. Oh, look at me. Look at me. I, I may. You know what, Lord? You got me to the 20th level. That was all you, Lord. I made it to the 20th level. It's, it's retarded. It's back. What was one of the words we looked at? It's brutish. It's stupid and sensible and stupid. You can't give God glory in that. You can't give God thanks in that. You can try, but God's going to look at you as a brutish person. You know? Now, so we got that body, soul, and spirit. Not a, once again, the Trinity people, God had one million points, Trinity people zero points. Okay? Now, up here it says the poor also. Okay, respect of person, respect, goodwill, and favor. You're not to have favor to persons that are wicked, or any person. You're supposed to have righteous judgment, and once again, it needs to line up with the King James Bible. But abhor, when it says that he that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. Okay? Abhor, to hate extremely, or with contempt, to loathe, to detest. When you see someone out there that's like that, um, you're not to hate your enemies today, but you're supposed to look at them differently than you would somebody who judges righteous judgment according to the Word of God, that judges equally and holds everybody to the same standard. When you got someone that's basically a hypocrite, um, you're to poor that person, and you're supposed to say, hey, this person is a respecter of persons. Okay. You're supposed to loathe and detest somebody like that. Today, people don't care. You should. That's why you make sure everybody lines up with the, the book, with the Word of God. Proverbs 28.17, if you want to turn to Proverbs 28.17. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to this pit, let no man stay him. Okay, violence, injury, or hurt. Okay, we kind of know violence when you injure or hurt somebody. It says the blood of any person. What is somebody, what do I have inside me? Blood. I have a body, soul, and spirit, but there's blood inside me, okay? Persons there. It's still a reference to somebody that has a body, soul, and spirit, and it's talking about the blood that's in that person that has a body, soul, and spirit. Let no man slay him, okay? Now, go on to the next one, Proverbs 28, 19. Proverbs 28, 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Give me a second. Okay, it's just it's saying it again. I was making sure I didn't have two. Sometimes. Okay. A man, let's see. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Okay. This goes back to, I kind of jumped the gun when I said it last time. This one's talking about poverty enough. If you're going to hang out with uh, people that are vain persons, uh, you're going to wind out that you're going to have poverty. Okay? When I see all these homeless people and here goes another car. Give me a second.
see a lot of these homeless people that they will hang out together and when you talk to them saying, hey, you know, there's jobs, um, you can slowly get back on your feet, there's places you can go to stay the night and there's people that will help you uh, get back on your feet and get to working and they don't want to. They just hang out with other vain persons. They become a vain person. When you hang out with vain people, um, make sure I'm using the context here. Vain persons, we remember vain, empty, worthless, having no substance, value, or importance. You hang out with them, guess what? You're gonna become like them, okay? And guess what? You're gonna have poverty. And that's what they are, they have poverty. I preach the gospel to them um, in one of my walk and talks, recent, my last walk and talk, uh, I talked to one of them before. So I'm all about preaching the gospel to the poor people, but you can't be, he that tilleth the land shall have plenty of bread. You need to work. If you don't work, you don't deserve to eat. Okay. The Bible says that, and I'll probably put it down at the bottom because I can't remember the exact verse. If you don't, if you don't work, neither shall ye eat. Like I said, I'll have to put it down there. It's not in my notes. Okay, that person there, body, soul, and spirit. Not referred to just the body, not referred just the soul, and not referred just to a spirit. All three have to be present in order to be called a person. Proverbs 28, 21, last one. Proverbs 28, 21. To have respect of persons is not good. For for a piece of bread that man will transgress to break or violate a law, civil or moral okay transgress okay he'll turn you can um, if you have a respect a person is no good for a piece of bread that man will transgress to break or violate law that man will transgress and there's the definition transgress to break or violate a law civil or moral okay kind of had it messed up to have respect of persons is no good. We've already come through this tons of times. Respect of persons. You're saying, I'm going to hold this one over this one, and I'm going to overlook this guy's bad things. He's righteous. He's not doing the bad things, the wrong things. What does it talk about? Breaking the law, violating the law, civil or moral. No, no, no. He's not doing it. This person is, but I'm going to overlook it. Okay. I'm going to overlook it. And you can bribe people, like it says here, for the piece of bread that man will transgress. Okay. Persons, always someone that has a body, soul, and spirit. You can't get around it. And they will twist the word. They'll add their own definition to it. That's how they do a lot of things. Right now, a big thing is call. They're trying to say call doesn't mean ask when the definition means, one of the definitions means ask. Okay, and from my understanding, I want to do a Bible uh, word study on call, but I want to get these word studies done. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next word study.